coming to my presentation at the end of the day. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Drupal 7 end of life and how to budget uh, for that. First I want to thank our sponsors. Without them it would be pretty impossible to have the uh, this conference. My name is Irina Zaks. I'm developer, I'm open source evangelist, and I work in research and academia. We build a lot of custom sites, uh, and I'm co-maintainer of Feeds module, and one of organizers of Stanford Webcam, which usually happens in the spring. How many sites are still on Drupal 7? One, too many, actually, it's 300,000 too many, 296 something. How many people in the room still have Drupal 7? One, two, three, four, five. So this talk will be probably more relevant for people who are still on Drupal 7. Hopefully, um, checklist that I will be showing will be helpful to any of your other projects. So these are things that I would like to be take away from this session. We're going to talk about options that are available today. Checklists for migrations are relevant to any migration project. It will work for you migrating from any system to any system. Uh, average migration costs are about Drupal 7, of Drupal 7 to anything in Drupal ecosystem, and uh, the rest of it is more about how we migrate, how we make up these things efficient. And before I dive into details, I want to say that Checklist Manifesto is one of my favorite books. It was published in 2011, and I highly recommend it to anyone who is doing any project management. This has been essential tool for us when we are running any processes, and everything that we do, we do using Checklist. There's a bunch of things that we don't cover in this presentation. There are tons of other information that cover uh, these issues. So the January 5, 2025 is last official day when Drupal Association supports uh, Drupal 7. After that, this uh, is end of life and this software is labeled unsupported. Uh, we know that all migration should have started a long time ago. The question is why there are so many sites still on Drupal 7. And we, what we see is majority of the sites that we are migrating on Drupal 7 now is my site works great, I don't want to change anything, and I don't have budget. So this is the uh, overall picture that I will be addressing in this presentation. And there's going to be a lot of checklists, so like boom, 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 bullet, 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 bullet. What is impacting your website life cycle? And why website is uh, what website life cycle is relevant? Because when you're budgeting how much money you're going to spend within the next six months, you're also thinking how long I, this money will last me. And if you just develop the site and the site works well for you, uh, you're looking at different ways, like, oh, I've been using site for uh, 12 years, it still works great, but it's already have great return on investment and I have some savings to invest in the better site uh, for the next generation. So these are major things that impact website life cycle. Because if organization changes, the website changes, or this should change. Uh, technology changes are becoming very rapid these days, with, and, which makes it difficult to follow. And this is one of the reasons why WordPress sites are so popular, because this is what's one platform that has been supporting it consistently, even though it's not as powerful as a Drupal-based solution. So we're looking at average life cycle five to 10 years. If you're looking at migration, you're saying, okay, what am I gonna be doing? How do I spend the money next five years? Any questions so far? Okay. Next set of things that we're looking at is how do you plan the migration itself? And this is rough distribution of tasks that you're doing during migration. 
And the key element for successful migration is set expectation. Setting expectations is very important all over the place. I'm not going to go through this checklist. Everyone can read. This link is downloadable, so you can always uh, come back oops, and uh, download it and use it. That is one thing that I would love you to take home, because every time at least we run migration or a project, we copy this list and start adding details. The details will always be different. The list remains the same. Okay, first step, analysis and discovery. What do we do there? Understand your needs with the current site. Does it work well for you? Yes, proceed towards migration. If site does not work well for you now, don't plan migration. Plan building new site. Building new site is different from migration. Because the goal of migration is like you take things as is and you move it to a supported platform. If you're building new site, you're looking at a different processes and different steps. The second part is what are you looking within your next generation website? And here are questions that we're always looking at. One is, uh, is it a standard, uh, standard site, well, you know, very similar to many other sites, or is it one of a kind? And in research and academia, we often build very unique sites, and we can't, uh, Whatever we build, we can spread over many sites. And this defines how we plan the, uh, the features and uh, costs. And another important thing is you need to know who is your support team. Are you, do you have in-house team of developers? Are you working with an agency that migrates site and leave? Or you only have one person team, which is very usual case in uh, nonprofits especially. Uh, where you have one person that supports, deals with everything that's related to the web. And when you're choosing your migration options, consider both short-term tasks and long-term tasks. So to summarize all this long talk, this is our list that we usually have when we begin migration. And the second part of my talk, we will compare costs for each option and um, then we will have Q&A session. Actually, we can have any questions right now? Okay. These are options that are available today. What day is today? August uh, 13th, right? Today, these four versions are available. Full migration to Drupal 10 using retrofit module to run Drupal 7 code inside Drupal 10, migration to backdrop, and extended security support. These things also change often. Staying on unsupported Drupal 7 is not a recommended option. It is similar to driving a car with, with expired registration. You might get away with that, but if something happens, you're gonna be fined big time. Not to mention that if you don't have security um, updates on your system, you don't know what's actually going on there because somebody might be sitting there, you know, monitoring traffic without you even knowing that. So first slide is what are, what things you want to know when you're migrating, doing full migration to Drupal 10. Um, one thing that you need to know is you have to have a developer. Site builders at this time cannot set up Drupal 10. Uh, there are some, like Pantheon provides setup uh, where you have one click install. Uh, Drupal 4 is beginning to provide this, but if you need to add modules, you need to do it using Composer. So you need somebody who knows how to run Composer, and usually these are developers. Uh, you will need to develop new theme, though there is a lot of contract themes, so you might be able to modify that one. If you have any custom modules, you will need to completely rebuild them because uh, Drupal 10 is using very different code uh, system. It's object-oriented versus previously just functional. 
And then you need to migrate content, users, views, and all the other things that you have. Tools are available. There is wonderful, my favorite, one-click upgrade in Core. Very few people know about it. Um, it's working since Drupal 8. It does require um, sometimes some tweaking, but for well-designed sites, it might work. Um, Acquia uh, just recently open source Acquia Migrate Accelerate Suite. It's a terrific tool. Thank you again, Wim Layers, for making this happen. It's open, people can use it, but it is still pretty complex uh, tool. There are Migrate and Migrate Plus models, and there's Speed module to moving users and content. So to summarize, uh, this is like high level overview slide, and we, we, we do this slide for each of the uh, options uh, that shows like what do you need and average cost of migration for the medium size size starts at 50k so if somebody comes uh, with a budget of five thousand dollars it's not likely that it would be possible to migrate them to Drupal 10. There might be exceptions but typically you need to have sufficient budget to begin Drupal 10 migration. Um, great thing, all the new features in Contrib modules are developer. Uh, there's lots of uh, new things happening, lots of new development. Um, they work, if you have a large uh, size or size with multiple installations where you do a lot of DevOps, you can greatly benefit from all the tools built into Drupal 10. Uh, if you don't have enough time to rewrite your code and you have large custom code, you might want to use Retrofit for Drupal 7. This is a great module developed by <coughs> Matt Glamon and it buys you time uh, to migrate your code by staying on completely supported platform. Uh, this is so a developer's you. tool and you know it is you need to have developers, uh, but again, you are on supported platform. And usually for this sites that have a lot of custom code have developers anyways. Uh, this is an option that we have been using a lot lately. Uh, lots of sites were migrating to a backdrop, which is fork of Drupal, and it was forked at the time of Drupal 7. It is very similar to Drupal 10 in the ways that it has a lot of modern features out of the box and even more features. It has project browser in core. It has uh, core updates through web UI. It has um, a lots of lots of other, it has uh, tokens in core. It has path out in core, lots of things that an admin toolbar in core. And it is really very well designed for site builders. And therefore, if you are in the category of uh, organizations where you have one web person that deals with everything, uh, that is a very good solution for you. Uh, and it's very good solution to build with because I, have, right now, most of the sites that we build with, we build with backdrop and we maintain a couple of Drupal 10 sites and a couple of uh, new Drupal 10 sites and new backdrop sites and the cost of supporting Drup uh, backdrop site is much lower than supporting a Drupal 10. The great news, the upgrade runs like a charm. I have I've done lots of presentations specifically on backdrop upgrade. There's lots of demos, there's lots of instructions and there's lots of tools. So this is the summary for backdrop. Um, it gives you overview for what you can get for a smaller budget. And another great thing about backdrop that it doesn't have project at this point, we don't have an idea that end of life will be at a certain date. Uh, it will be supported so right now, backdrop is 1.28. Uh, backdrop 2 will be released 
some time eventually, but overall life cycle is much longer, so you can expect reliable at least five years of if we migrate today that you will have for five years supported version. Uh, for Drupal 10, uh, 20, 20, June 2026 is end of support, and we all expect that it will be much easier to migrate from 10 to 11 and from 11 to 12, but if you have large custom uh, base, then it might be a little bit of a challenge. People often ask if I can get from backdrop to Drupal 11, whatever is there, and the answer is absolutely 100% yes, because it's this similar, like if you're migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 10, or you're migrating from backdrop to Drupal 11, 12, or whatever, it's the same process, but we hope that there will be more tools in Drupal 11, 12 to bring things in from other systems. And now we have this new option for extended security support for Drupal 7. At the hero devs are here. Tag1 just recently said that they will be offering it. And it is an interesting option. Um, if you have budget to migrate, I would recommend going to a stable system, new stable supported system. But if you just need another six months extension while you are um, managing your migration, like, oh, we started, but we just can't, can't release it before January 5. And you need to have security certificate stamp of approval. Extended support might be more efficient for you. But again, it depends on whether you're running one site or you have 20 sites and uh, whether you need extended security support for core or for modules as well. And then after whatever time goes, you're not going to be moving to the new system. You're still staying on the old system with old features and you're not getting any new features. You're just kind of maintaining the system. Uh, there's two beautiful upcoming options. One is called Drupal Forge. I highly recommend people to check it out. Uh, I think that for our uh, Fibonacci Web Studio, we plan to move our site to Drupal Forge. They are offering hosting, offering hosting on DigitalOcean, which is a little easier to maintain than AWS because it's designed for the same category of site builders. I want to do minimum configuration through panel, through some kind of UI, and I don't want to be a, you know, system to system administrator, developer, DevOps. I want to concentrate on the content and information architecture. And hopefully Drupal Starship will be available for actual, not, not the test version, but the actual uh, release and it will be also available in Drupal Forge as well. Okay, um, any questions? Deep breath, it's the end of the day. Thank you for still being here and being awake. I'm very grateful. Um, so next set of slides is what tools make your life easier when you move from Drupal 7 site to wherever you're moving. Uh, three modules made our migrations uh, very efficient. One of them is site audit module. Uh, the original site module was developed a long time ago when Pantheon was beginning to host uh, their sites and then it was extended to, to have UI and it gives you very nice interface of whatever is on your site. It's available on Drupal 10 as well. Developer John Hugh is uh, talking about DevOps next door, so you can talk to him if you want. And it allows you to see uh, all kind of information about your system in one integrated screen. Uh, all this information is available, but for me, uh, when I'm doing analysis, it, will take, I don't know, two hours, four hours, six hours to compile all different reports. These are fields, these are nodes, these are blocks. Uh, site audit module runs the whole report for you and puts it out, and if you want just uh, one type of report, you can select it in settings. 
So I personally find it very, very helpful. This is our savings. You can save 15% of your budget. It's usually a very good feeling. You can go get yourself two cups of coffee instead of one. Uh, Drupal upgrade status, again, bless you, and uh, backdrop upgrade status are two uh, modules that are very important when you're making decision about your migration because moving things from one module to another or replacing modules is a big undertaking. Uh, so this uh, module is, is all three modules you're putting on Drupal 7. These are not on your new system. Um, sometimes it's nice if you have more than one instance, it's good if you have live site and non-production site, it makes you more confident when you're adding your new modules, but this all, all three modules can be added to the live site without damaging anything because they're just reporting tools, nothing else. Um, in backdrop, when you're doing your check, you can see that some of the modules are automatically included in core. And that makes, again, number of models that you need to install in the new instance uh, lower. Um, and I'm going to do a short presentation of our one of our most recent migrations for California Prenatal Quality Care Collaborative, CPQCC. This is a non-profit uh, and it supports a California network of neonatal intensive care units. And we're very honored to support organizations where people literally save babies. These are all the doctors that are working in um, high-risk infant uh, clinics. Uh, so when we were doing migration for them, we took the budget approach that was inspired by Stanford uh, Solar Project. It was one of the featured uh, projects in at Stanford webcamp and in Pantheon blog. Uh, it's Stanford Learning Opportunities and it lists all uh, internships and other learning opportunities available to Stanford students and it includes also application process and sending notification to whoever the posting and there's a lot of uh, workflow behind it. And main Stanford platform that hosts over 3,000 site runs on Drupal 9, 10, 11. But when um, research IT uh, was making a decision where to move the site and they got comparative quote for Drupal 10 and backdrop, they have chosen to go to with backdrop. And we support this approach. We stand by this word. We do take uh, stewardship of funds and resources seriously because we need this money for nonprofit to pay on nonprofits doing their job, not on paying us for more expensive websites. So we had an option to migrate both either to Drupal 10 and to Backdrop and we were very happy with our decision. Because it is upgrade and not rebuilt, all the content stays intact. We don't have, and we run lots of different migrations. One of the challenges is like, did I migrate all the users? Did I migrate all the content? Have we forgotten something? Something is missing. Images are not where they are supposed to be. This does not happen with backdrop migration because we take the database, we import it into backdrop, and then core uh, or update runs the update and your content on the site is ready. Um, Backdrop has Bootstrap 5 based theme, so we did a little bit of tweaking with um, colors, making it more uh, uh, brand colors, uh, but it was much easier than fully redeveloping the theme. And field collections are replaced by amazing module, which we found when we were doing this migration. Paragraphs of plenty module. Out of the box, it gives me exactly what I need. It gives me cards, uh, text, hero, image, accordions, and a couple other types of paragraphs. And it all just works. You press the button, it all works there. And that is... Um, 
So this is like this layout builder or blocks or all these things that are different on every uh, next installation. They are, are unified and it's very easy to go from one, uh, one site to another and know what to do. We did have their one customized update, um, which took a little bit extra time, which was for converting Biblio model. And we uh, completed this whole project uh, in a, about a month. And it was done, and it's live now. So, measure twice and select right to for each job. That is conclusion of all this uh, slide. Now it's a discussion and Q&A time.